Hello YouTube and welcome to this video. Before we begin, let us do a quick recap of the previous video. In the previous video, we looked into the historical evidence for the Israelites in Egypt. And one of the highlights of that previous video was that we looked into a papyrus scroll called the Brooklyn Papyrus 35.1446. Now, what makes this papyrus scroll very significant is because it has a list of slave names that are of Hebrew origins, thus proving that the Israelites were in Egypt, and thus proving that the, Israelite, the Israelites were slaves in ancient Egypt. Now that we have been caught up with what the previ previous video said, let's now look into the historical evidence for Moses, the Prince of Egypt. There are many Christians, including many prominent Bible scholars and many prominent Christian theologians, that don't even know that there are Jewish sources outside of the Bible that name the Pharaoh who raised Moses. And these Jewish sources, they were written, they were written by a Jewish historian named Artabanus. Artabanus was a Jewish historian during the 2nd century BC. He was commissioned by the Greek pharaohs of that time to write a historical account of the Jews in Egypt in the ancient Greek language. It is this great ancient historian who named the pharaoh who raised Moses as the prince of Egypt. Now, I got some good news and some bad news, but let's start off with the bad news. The bad news is that many of the original manuscripts that were written by Artapanus were destroyed by the great Alexandrian fire being that many of his manuscripts were in the ancient library of Alexandria. Now, the good news is this, is that many of his written works were quoted and summarized by other ancient historians. Artabanus names the pharaoh who raised Moses as the prince of Egypt as Conophorus. Now, according to David Roll, Conophorus is the Greek translation of the Egyptian word Conophore. And only one pharaoh in ancient Egypt had this name. Kanafri was the coronation name of Sobekhotep IV. Therefore, Sobekhotep IV was the pharaoh who raised Moses as the prince of Egypt. So now let's look at the pharaohs who oppressed the Israelites. Sobekhotep III was the pharaoh who enslaved the Israelites. He essentially led the Israelites into slavery. And after Sobekhotep III, there was another pharaoh named Neferhotep I. And according to David Roll, Moses was born during the reign of Neferhotep I, which means that Neferhotep I was the pharaoh who ordered the genocide of the Israelite boys. Now, after Neferhotep I, there was a pharaoh who had a very short reign who just only ruled Egypt for three months. And that pharaoh was Silhathor. Now, after Silhathor was Sobekhotep IV. Now, we still don't know how many years Sobekhotep IV ruled Egypt. However, we do know that Sobekhotep IV was married to one of the daughters of Neferhotep I. Now, let's understand how Moses was raised as the prince of Egypt. It was tradition for the children of the pharaoh and the children of the Egyptian nobility to learn about the art of war, the history of and culture of their people, including learning about the various languages in their region. Now, obviously, the ancient Egyptian language was the first language that they learned, but they were also taught how to speak Akkadian, which was the language of the people east of them, because Akkadian was the language of diplomacy, and the ancient Egyptians had to deal had to deal diplomatically with the people that were living east of them, which is the Levant region of the Middle East. Moses, as a child in the Pharaoh's household, would have learned many of these things. So this is what the Jewish hist historian Artabanus says about Moses. So according to Artabanus, Moses led the Egyptians to defeat the armies that were invading Egypt from the south. Moses became incredibly popular among the Egyptians and among the Israelites because of his military success and because of the fact 
that he was an Israelite and non-ethnic Egyptian in line for the throne. Artabanus records that Sobekotum IV and his household were jealous of Moses because of his popularity and the fact that he was a non-ethnic Egyptian in line for the Egyptian throne. The jealousy of Sobekotum IV and his household would have caused Moses to go through an identity crisis, leading him to observe the oppression of the people of Israel by the Egyptians. As a result of Moses observing his people's oppression by the Egyptians, he saw how the Egyptians were treating them, and he saw an Egyptian person beating up one of, one of the Hebrews, which led Moses to kill him. The killing of the Egyptian led Moses to flee from Pharaoh to Midian, which we can read in Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. So let's read this scripture passage. Now it came about in those days when Moses had grown up that he went out to his fellow Hebrews and looked at their hard labors. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his fellow Hebrews. So he looked this way and that. And when he saw that there was no one around, he struck and killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. Now when he went out the next day, and behold, two Hebrews were fighting with each other. And he said to the offender, Why are you striking your companion? But he said, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and said, Surely the matter has become known. When Pharaoh heard about this matter, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. May God add his blessing to the reading. In the next video, we're going to look how God punished the Egyptians through the ten plagues and the historical evidence for the ten plagues happening in ancient Egypt. And now, my friends, may the grace of our Lord, King, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the boundless love of the Father, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.